Um, and so we wanted to find out uh, more about the film. And how long did it take you to make this film? Richard, uh, um, you can start. Bits, bits and pieces. Uh, originally, we started shooting a couple days after the hurricane. And uh, very quickly, I just called a few people I'd worked with before. And we went down there, and the actor asked me, um, you know, he said, well, what, what's my character? And, you know, and, I, and I said, well, look, we, we can't record sound. We're just going to shoot some footage. If it looks good, I'll make up a story when I get home. And uh, so, and then in bits and pieces. The we, cart before the horse. Yeah, you know, it was just because there was the moment where the storm right. was, and, Immediate you know, scene. either start now or not. Um, and so uh, we built it in bits and pieces over many months. So it's, it's hard to say. It was kind of done in bits and pieces over, right. I'd say, a year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what was the budget? Uh, for, we'll start with Richard. Oh, uh, gosh, that's really hard to say. Um, I would say all in uh, less than five million. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was so lucky to, uh, we, a, a part of the film was I came out to Queens and uh, uh, originally doing some volunteering and uh, the, the group we came out to assist, they were closed that day, so there was another group nearby, they had a little postcard that said, if we're closed, go next door, there's a place that's helping out the firefighters. Mm -hmm. So we went just by chance and we, <coughs> and I met two of those uh, guys, uh, Chris and Mike, and, um, and you know, we, we got along, and so that's how they started doing it. And then they brought in their friend Barney, who's listed there as Kieran, who has that amazing footage, uh, mm -hmm. who's a fire marshal, and I guess fire marshals, part of their standard equipment is they're issued a, a digital waterproof video camera, and he had swam back into the fire, so, it was only later on that we got that footage. Right. And I'm very grateful to them. And so I think the Queensborough okay, Film Festival great. I right, can't is wait. presenting to the firefighters a certificate. Great. Right. I will um, give them. That's so wonderful. Right. That yeah, these are, yeah. For acknowledgement for so the much. film being in the festival. But, you know, this really interested me in terms of this strange uh, mix of romantic comedy and documentary as kind of inappropriately put together, but therefore kind of productive of a certain kind of thought. And so I'm interested in exploring, uh, I have one of the projects I have is another kind of docu-fiction, mixing documentary and fiction in this strange, uh, and, and romantic comedy, in fact, in this strange kind of coupling, so. Right, right. And it's sort of like they offset each other. Yeah, right? yeah. They're a little off, it's a little off-putting, but It is, because you're like drawn into the romance, you're kind of getting involved right. with it, and then all of a sudden you're in reality, right, and somebody's right. like telling you about the house burning. Yeah, right? exactly. It's, it's a little, <laughs> there's a little discomfort in that mix, but that's kind of interesting, and I like exploring that. That the was fire the marshal. fire marshal uh, who was Oh, great, thanks. Who was one of the uh, firefighters who lived in that area in Breezy Point. It is the largest fire since the residential fire since the Civil War in New York. And uh, he happened to be able to get into the middle of it. But that footage, which is extraordinary, I think, is otherwise not been shown. I mean, for him, it was a real ethical question. You know, again, he's trained to fight fires. And for him to film it really was a predicament for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and he's in talking there, he's trying to explain that for him, the way he explained it is he would transmit it. In other words, by filming it, he could pass on and let future <coughs> generations know what had happened. Mm -hmm. But it was a real questioning process for him about what does it mean to witness something and put your energy towards filming it versus fighting it, which is his, what he's trained to do, but right. there he really couldn't do. So it was a really interesting relationship to the act of filming. It's going to go, you know, you're just like thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know if there's another way to look at it um, that you're seeing. Anything else? Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's any other way to look at it. 
I have some thoughts about it. Um, so there, there's this one guy who talked about how there were texts that were more readerly versus writerly. In other words, like if you read an article in a newspaper about something that happened somewhere, you don't sit there. I mean, you, you read it and you read it for the information. You don't read it and go, gee, who wrote that? You know, you're, 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 it's, you're getting information. And it's, uh, the act of reading is almost like transparent. You're not really caught up in, in the act of reading. And then there are other texts where, you know, you have to kind of put yourself more into it, or it's more like, it's what this one guy called writerly text. In other words, in reading it, you kind of write it a little bit. You, you put a little bit of your own experience. The most extreme case of that would be like, Finnegan's Wake by Joyce, where it makes absolute no sense until you kind of plunge into it. So, you know, and I think with a film like these, they're kind of more writerly texts. In other words, you, you kind of put yourself forward. It's, you know, um, uh, a Hollywood film classically is described as a roller coaster ride. It's very passive. You're there, you're, you know, you're like in a roller coaster. You don't do anything, you don't drive. These kinds of film, you're more, you know, you're kind of in control. You're kind of a little bit engaged in making meaning and saying, you know, this is important or that's important. So I think in that way, they're more actively involved, the audience, in, in the making of meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, my impulse has often been with fairly strong stories that have a strong reality behind them is to, is to deal with them with an element of fiction. Um, I guess I'm interested in the, in the kind of borderline between the two, between the way in which, um, you know, history involves, a, involves storytelling and, you know, how, do, how we struggle to make a truth through telling something that's made up and and um, so it was you know I, I immediately went down you know these friends who had lost all their power and told me there was you know it was pitch black down in the East Village and so my impulse was to uh, that among my the people I could work with was to grab an actor um, and then you already had the equipment you had your camera yeah I had the 5D you know a little Canon 5D we went down there with the Canon 5D, no sound. 5D has lousy sound. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a great question, uh, but it really was my initial impulse. Uh, and, you know, and then I started working on it from there. Um, it's a very good question. We're so happy.